All right, we're good to go. We're live. Okay. Good morning, Father Bible Church. And welcome this Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is important because that is when Jesus arrived on the scene. And people were waiting for their Savior for hundreds of years, prophecies, and all these things were happening. And finally, Jesus comes into town, and everybody was just shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So please stand with us as we pray and worship. Jesus is here with us, and that uh, we're just going to continue this holy season honoring Jesus. Amen? Amen. 
but the world always turned around and always brought God in back to them. And this made him stronger. This, this kept, on, kept on healing and healing them. And we pray for those miracles, God. We pray, Lord, that Ryan will speak words one day, God. God, that he will be able to say mama to his mom and grandma and great-grandma. And then he'll be able to speak, speak words out. Lord, we don't give up on that. We keep praying for those things, God. We keep praying for these miracles to happen. It's not just one prayer and then we walk away and forget about it. The Lord says to keep praying without ceasing, to just continue praying for these things, and these things will happen. God will make a way. God can heal. God can restore. He can do these things. We don't serve a God that's dead. We serve a God who's alive and who has healing, who has power over every power and authority of darkness. He has power over all those rulers, over all those things. Those things are nothing to him. He has all authority, all power, all dominion over everything. And we believe that today, amen? Do we believe that today? That God has power and authority, that God can heal and restore, and he can make things perfect and well? If there's anything right now that you've been praying for, that's just in your heart, that you just, you're asking for a miracle, Lord. Whatever it is, something in your, your own body, something in someone else's body that you know, salvation for somebody. Just speak it out, just say it out to him right now, God. Just say, God, heal this person, salvation for this person, restoration for this person, or people, or multiple things. It could be over a job. It could be over um, just anything. Maybe a habit you want to get rid of. Maybe an addiction. Maybe um, you just want to spend more time with God and you think, God, I just can't do it. He says you can. Because he's the God of miracles. He's the God of miracles. Over and over and over again, you'll see that in the word. How many times he just, just continued working on our behalf. You know, even when we don't see it, he's working, right? Let's go ahead and sing that again. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And that's right now. Here we go. Even when. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop.
You are more than enough, and God, you will restore, you will save, you will heal, and you will do all these things, God, in your power, in your authority, because you love us, God, and you will always be there for us, God. And we just praise you today on this Palm Sunday, God. We just praise Jesus for um, following and obeying everything that the Heavenly Father asked him to do. And he did it willingly for us. And we just praise you, Jesus, for all that you are. And we just give you all the praise and glory this morning and every morning. In Jesus' name we all pray and we say Amen. Amen. Go ahead and greet one another this morning. Not too long ago. What? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'll weekend today, Father. Be with us now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we have um, I guess a couple of little announcements. So as I mentioned before, Palm Sunday, so here's the schedule for Holy Week, according to the Christian calendar. We have Palm Sunday, which is today. It's the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem. And then we have I'm not sure if I pronounce it right. It's called Monday. Thursday? Monday? Monday? Monday, Monday, Thursday, which commemorates the foot washing and last supper with uh, the disciples. And some churches have foot, foot washing stuff that day, but you don't want to touch my feet. They're pretty stinky, so we're not doing that. Uh, I don't want to touch your feet either. No, I just joke. Maybe someday we'll do that, but not anytime soon. Uh, so Good Friday will be this upcoming Friday, which we commemorate what Jesus did at Calvary. And please be here at 7 p.m. that night. We're going to be uh, having a joint service with the Lutheran Church uh, that night. And uh, Pastor Darrell will be our lead pastor that night. Pastor Darrell. 
We can't wait to see what the Lord, how the Lord uses him and the worship team that night to just have a, a reverent, holy night, just thinking about the cross, what Jesus did for us. Um, and then we have Holy Saturday, which is commemorates Jesus' body resting in the tomb. And then, of course, next Sunday, the Super Bowl of Christianity, Easter morning. So please, the Resurrection Sunday morning. So please be here for sure next Sunday. Bring somebody. Bring a neighbor. Bring a friend. Just, just bring somebody who needs to hear the gospel. Amen? Amen. All right. So it's Palm Sunday, as you know. And uh, one Palm Sunday, there was um, a five-year-old girl named Annie. And she, it was again, it was Palm Sunday. She wanted to go to church. She had a sore. She was sick. And she, she couldn't go to church. And so her mom stayed behind with her. So when they get the family, the dad, and the other kids get back from church, they're carrying little palm branches. And Annie asked, hey, what, what are those palm branches for? And the, the, the dad said, well, you know, when Jesus came by on the colt and donkey, uh, that they waved palm branches at Jesus. And she says, would you know it? She fussed. One Sunday I'm sick and Jesus shows up and offers pony rides. <laughs> Isn't that the way kids think? You're like, man, he was there. If you want to go to put the first slide up, the title of today's message is The Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace, if you have the notes in front of you, on the top there. You put the wrong one in there? <laughs> That's the, definitely the wrong slideshow. He had, it up, he had it up earlier, I'm not sure, but anyway, we, we just keep going. Uh, Prince of Peace. We're looking at, uh, in Luke chapter 19 this morning, and on your sheet's a little, it's, there you go, thank you. It's a little different on your sheet that I, I used to put the vocal scripture on top and we kind of do the points below it, but today we're doing it just part of the scripture, well, point parts into point parts. It's a little different, so just, I'm sure you'd be able to follow on just fine. So we'll start in Luke 19, 35 through 40, and then the first point is on my way. Number one on your sheet, you go ahead and change the screen, on my way. Luke 19, 35 through 40. So they brought the colt. You remember the, we didn't read the whole thing, but remember Jesus said, hey, to a couple of disciples, go into the town, I need, I need a colt. To, you know, so they go, and he says, you find one tied, just grab it, and someone says, if whoever needs it, if they say, who needs this, say the Lord needs it. Okay, the Lord needs it, so they, they took the thing. But there's some controversy around if it was the two donkeys, or one donkey. Because <laughs> the book of Matthew says a donkey's cult. And the rest of the gospels say a cult. So some people say Jesus rode on two animals, which would be kind of hard. It'd be kind of one of those westerns where you stand on the horses and do like that, you know. So I doubt that's what he did. More than likely, a cult is uh, like a, a pony, a horse, a donkey, a mule that's under four years old. And so it was probably a donkey's baby. More than likely, there's probably two animals there, but Jesus rode on the colt, the smaller one. That's, you can figure it out. That's what I figured out. I don't know if it's true or not, but I just kind of combining the scriptures together. It looks like there probably possibly was two animals there, but he rode on one. You good? <laughs> okay. So this is, this is what happened. So verse 35, so they brought the colt to Jesus and they threw their garments over it for him to ride on it. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road to him when he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives. So he's, he's not in Jerusalem yet. He's heading down towards Jerusalem, okay? Uh, 37, when he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all the followers began to shout, sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles that they had seen. Verse 38, blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord, or some translations say Hosanna. Peace in heaven and glory in the heavens, highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers. 
for saying things like that. And Jesus replied in verse 40, if they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. Think about that. So this is Jesus, he's coming down on the, on the cult, coming down into Jerusalem. He's not quite there yet, but he's coming down. It's a big party, think of the scene, kind of like the, the previous slide, we had like a big party, people at the palm branches, people laying down their cloaks. It's a scene, big scene going on there, okay? And, uh, and he's fulfilling a prophecy in Zechariah 9.9, which on your sheet says, Rejoice greatly, my people, shout with joy, for look, your king is coming. He is the righteous one, the victor, yet he is lowly, riding on a donkey. So this was written thousands of years before Jesus has happened. And here we see Jesus fulfilling this prophecy on the colt. Amen? Pretty cool. So the people knew what that meant. When Jesus showed up going down on a cult and people worshiping him, they knew, they knew what that meant. Sometimes when there's a conquering king, the conquering king would get on a horse, he'd ride into the city, and, the, and, the, and he would be like, yay, the, we won the war, we won the war. It was like a big deal. But Jesus came on a colt, humbly riding on the colt. What that meant to the people was that he was a conquering king. He came in peace. What that meant is that when the king came in a horse, you don't know if he comes in peace, but if he comes on a donkey, he comes in peace. And so when Jesus came riding down, they knew that this king came in peace. Isn't that beautiful? He came in peace. And what would that peace be? The peace is between God and man. Jesus is the bridge between God and man. This is the gospel in a nutshell right here. Man was separated from God through the fall and Jesus laid down his life on the cross for our sins that we can reach the Father. That's the gospel. And that's when he came. I'm, the Bible calls Jesus, remember in, in, the, in, the, um, in Isaiah where it says the, that he'd be the mighty God and counselor, but he says that he'll be the prince of peace. And that's a beautiful thing because Jesus is the prince of peace. He providing peace between man and God. And the interesting part about this is that when the crowd was cheering like, Hosanna, Hosanna, they're, they're, they're doing all this stuff. They're expecting Jesus to like take off his thing and have a big S on his thing and have a cape come out and beat up the Romans. They're expecting Jesus to like, he's going to come in and take out our occupiers. Salvation, they had a different savior in mind. They thought Jesus was going to wipe out the Romans. But then you see later on what happens when the same crowd just says, Hosanna, Hosanna, they yell, crucify him, crucify him, because he didn't meet their expectations of the Savior. And that's sad. No longer will Jesus, Jesus at that moment in time wasn't interested in beating up the Romans and reigning over the Romans. He was interested in reigning over man and woman's hearts. He didn't want to come in and wipe out the Romans. He says, there's a bigger problem here. There's a bigger issue here. It's man's heart. I came to reign over man's heart. Later on, we know in the Gospels and the Revelation, Jesus will come back and set up his kingdom here and wipe out evil. But that's not this day. This is a spiritual kingdom he was setting up. Not a physical kingdom yet. Amen? His kingdom would reign in the hearts of men. In Luke 19.10 on your sheet, it says, here's the mission of Jesus. Why did Jesus come to earth? Why did he do all this stuff? For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He's saying, this is why I'm here. I came for the sick. I came for those separated from God. I came for the lost. Beautiful. And I found, you know, honestly, I've never taught Palm Sunday before. I've, I've always been assistant pastor. The senior pastor always teaches Palm Sunday and Easter and all that stuff, right? But, so I haven't, I mean, I've read this story many times in my devotionals, but I never studied the heck out of it like this week. And I said, this is the funniest thing I love this part, is that in, you can write out the, you can write out the scripture and look at it later, but John chapter 11, verses 53 and 57, John 11, 53 and 57, I love this. At some point, 
The Jewish leaders were really fed up with Jesus. Oh, this guy, they're mad at Jesus. And then they say, you know, so Jesus and his disciples, they leave Jerusalem. They go somewhere else. They're kind of not hiding, but they just left Jerusalem because they were, these guys were going to kill Jesus. It wasn't his time to die yet. And what happened was the Passover feast was coming up. And they were all huddling saying, is Jesus going to show up? Is Jesus going to show his face here at the Passover? Because we're, we want to arrest him. We want to kill him. Is he going to show his face. Well, <laughs> Hosanna, <laughs> Hosanna, blessed is the one. That, there was a party, do, 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 right? They're coming down the hill, <laughs> do, 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 do. and Hosanna, Hosanna, they're throwing down their clothes, he's riding on their donkeys, a big old party. He's saying, Here I am, that's it. <laughs> you want to get me? Here I am. And I got a party, man. I'm coming with a party. You want to arrest me? Here I am. You want to beat me? Here I am. Think about that. He just came, came down. Because he didn't care. He knew he was a wanted man. But he willingly came into town. Because he knew what was going to happen that week. He came to die for our sins. That's the purpose why he came. He wasn't going to go hiding away. He was going to say, hey, go get me that coat. Let's have a party. We're going to make a big scene over here. We'll let everyone know I'm the Messiah. I'm the king. And if you don't like it, deal with it. You want to arrest me? Go ahead. Remember Jesus was in front of Pontius Pilate. And Jesus said, you only have power over me. Because I gave you power over me. He knew he was going to die. Look at the Gospels all the time. Jesus said, I'm going to die. I'm going to be arrested. I'm going to get beat. Jesus, there's so many scriptures in the Gospel. Jesus is warning them. I'm going to, this is, this is happening. Remember Peter says, Lord, Lord, be quiet, Lord. Don't say those crazy things, Peter. You know? And Jesus says, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> right? Because Peter wasn't understanding that Jesus had to come and die for our sins. That's his purpose. He willingly went to the, like a sheep to the slaughter, the Bible says. Willingly laid down his life for us. That's the plan of salvation to save mankind. So when you think about good, I mean, you think about Palm Sunday, think about that Jesus knew what was happening. He understood what was happening, but he made a scene. He made a scene. And he finally accepted their worship. Remember throughout the Bible, Jesus said, my time hasn't come. My time hasn't come. But here he says, it's on now. Let's go. <laughs> go ahead and worship me. Even the rocks will cry out. If you don't worship me, these rocks will cry out worship to me. Because I'm worthy of praise. Amen? Amen. So number one, was on my way. He was on his way to save, save mankind. Number two is on my heart. On my heart. Go ahead and hit the slide, please. On my heart. Verses 41 through 44. But he came closer to Jerusalem and saw the city ahead. He began to weep. How I wish today that you all people would understand the way to what? Peace. He's a prince of peace. But now it's too late. The peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not have to leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize the day God visited you. He's pronouncing judgment on Jerusalem. And then you recognize that he was God visiting them. He reject, they rejected Christ. They rejected Christ. Jesus was making a way between God and man. And God's love and God's grace and God's forgiveness was pushed away. 
rejected. Uh, we don't want you, Jesus. We don't want your grace. We don't want your mercy. We don't want your love. We want things to be the same. We don't want to change. So Jesus pronounced judgment on them because Jesus came. God visited them and they rejected him. It's heavy stuff. On your sheet it says, Jesus here showed the heart of God. Even how even the judgment must be pronounced, it's never done with joy. Even when God's judgment is perfectly just and righteous, his heart weeps when he brings judgment. He wasn't like coming down with a big party and he sees Jerusalem. I told you all. I told you guys. You should have, you should have. And he think, I'm going to pronounce judgment. He, said, he, he, wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't angry at them. He was weeping. He was weeping. When God pronounces judgment, it always breaks his heart. It always breaks his heart. So number two was on my heart. And number three is on my word. On my word. You see this picture? It's pretty funny. Jesus goes beast mode <laughs> on the, the, the temple. <laughs> Verse 45 to 47, when Jesus goes beast mode. 45, when Jesus entered the temple court, he began to drive out those who were selling. It is written, he said to them, my house will be a house of prayer, but you made it into a den of robbers. Every day he was teaching at the temple, but the chief priests and the teachers of the law and leaders among them were trying to kill him. So interesting, this picture, you guys know about Jesus cleansing the temple. We, he went in and started whooping on people, started getting some cords. He started whooping people. Get out of get out of God's house. Get out of the house. He said, whoop, whoop, whoop. And he knocked the tables over. So people think Jesus is soft and he's weak. No. He went beast mode. Okay? And Jesus did this two times. At the beginning of his ministry, in John chapter 2, he came into the temple and whooped everybody, knocked the tables over. That's John chapter 2. And the end of his ministry, he did it again. Then they, here he comes again. Oh my gosh, he didn't stop whooping on us and turning, turning tables over and stuff. Man, he did it twice. Why did he do it two times? Because the house of God should be pure. Amen? The people of God should be pure and walk in purity. And so why did he cleanse the table? Why did he cleanse the temple for? Because Jesus drove out their merch. Basically, when people come during the Passover, they bring a, a lamb or a dove or something for to sacrifice. What these people would do, they would say, well, that's not good. Buy one of ours. Buy one of our animals to sacrifice. And they would charge up, up to 20 times more than what their animal cost. They're ripping people off. Ripping them off. Basically, they're monetizing God's forgiveness. They're monetizing God's favor and grace. I tell you one thing, I hate watching, you know, I, I, I don't like these televangels. You know that right now. Um, most of them I don't like. Whenever they say, if you send me money, I'll send you a handkerchief. If you send me money, I'll give you some of this holy water or whatever it is. It's like they're monetizing the gospel. Don't monetize the gospel is a free gift of God. The Bible calls the gospel a free gift. You shouldn't be charging people to get saved. If you give me money, God's going to save your soul. If you give me money, God, don't monetize the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a free gift of salvation. Amen? Amen. That frustrates me because anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Give me money and I'll save you. No. Anyone who calls upon his name shall be saved. You hear my frustration with that all time? Good. I don't like it. <laughs> so the word of God needs to be followed. When Jesus, when Jesus was tearing things down and whooping on people, he went back and he referred to the word of God. He went back to Isaiah. I think it's on your sheet, Isaiah 56, 7, where he says, again, thousands of years before Jesus did this, he says, I will bring them to my holy mountain of Jerusalem, and they will fill them with joy in my house of prayer. I will accept their burnt offerings and sacrifices, because my temple will be called 
a house of prayer for all nations. But remember, Jesus referenced that scripture. He says, this is something that the Lord spoke a long time ago. And now you guys are messing it up. You guys made a house of prayer to just making money. That's why he was angry at them. You can't monetize the gospel. You can't do it. Number three was on my word. And number four is on my own. On my own. There's not a scripture for this because Pastor Darrell will be taking it from here. But on my own. Remember Jesus says on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Remember that? That's in Psalm 22. Again, another prophecy. Jesus is doing the same in, in the Gospels. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, on my own, he was rejected by all, on his own. And so, again, Pastor Darrell will be talking about that on Friday. To summarize, if the team can come back up, please. To summarize today, Jesus is truly the Prince of Peace. Now we have peace with God through Jesus Christ for the cross of Calvary and peace. One thing people don't recognize, I don't believe, is that they go, yeah, I, my sins are forgiven. I'm going to go to heaven when I die. Prince of peace, hallelujah. But then they go, Jesus says, I want you to have peace with one another. <laughs> like, Wait a minute. I was good with making peace with God. That's, good. That's easy. But Jesus says, make peace in your relationship with one another. Oh, no, no, that, that, where's that in the Bible? I don't, I don't know where that one is. <laughs> because the Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has given us the ability to love one another. He's given us the ability to forgive one another. So the Prince of Peace not only comes to restore relationship between God and man, the Prince of Peace comes to restore relationship between one another. He also comes to bring emotional peace. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. If you need peace with Christ, if you're not a Christian, call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. If you need help with relationships and, and problems and relationships, call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the Prince of Peace. And he'll give us the power to get through that situation. And if you're dealing with any psychological or emotional things, the Prince of Peace is also there for us to bring peace in our hearts through life situations. Amen. Understand,
Jesus, for being the Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus, for making things right between us and the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us. Amen. Willingly laying down your life to save us. Thank you for your grace and your love and your forgiveness, Father. And now this week, Father God, we look to the cross. We look towards the cross and get our hearts ready for Good Friday. In Jesus' name, amen.